Morning. As you can see, it's quite early. It's actually quarter to six at the moment. And I've been hiking since uh, 4.30. It's a 20 mile dry stretch from where I camped at mile marker 1800.7. So just past the 1800 mark. Um, it's 20 miles to the road I'm going to take or try and hitch or walk down into um, Mazama village so at Crater Lake. Um, there is a side trail you can take down from a little bit further up, but to be honest, it looks longer and steeper than the road. So I think I'm just going to try and hitch or walk, walk the road because why would I walk further or steeper? And of course, since I pull out this camera, I've just dropped back down into a more tree area. Now you can't see anything. So that's helpful. Uh, it is super smoky this morning. Um, probably the smokiest it's been that I've hiked in so far. Uh, it smells like I'm hiking through a campfire. Uh, if you've ever been in an area where there's a lot of camping, like a very popular camping area, but a very, like a wilderness camping area, and everyone's had campfires the night before and let them burn out all night, and then all the cold air and the smoke has settled back down. Whoops. I just walked past some people's tents. Whoops. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Guess that's the uh, also Murphy's Law. And pull out this in the morning and you end up walking straight past some people's tents. Uh, it was good to pull up camp early yesterday actually. I'm not surprised I'm still pass I'm passing people in their tents. That's number two and three for the morning that I've passed. Who are still fast asleep. Um, I set up camp quite early, about five o'clock yesterday. Because um, I just didn't want to carry water for uh, dinner, yeah, for cooking for dinner for breakfast, um, that kind of stuff. Uh, in this dry stretch, it just means more water. So I camped at water, so I could just carry the water I needed to actually hike with for this 20 mile dry stretch. Um, it was weird to see, I think it was about eight or nine people go trucking past me, sort of between six and about eight, 8.30. Uh, I certainly seemed to hike a bit different everyone else. Most people seem to hike until almost dark and then set up and go to bed and then they sleep. Uh, for me they sleep in but for them you know hiking at seven or eight's normal but I don't know the temperatures are much cooler in the morning um, and I'm just naturally a morning person so you know, this morning was an exception I just couldn't sleep last night. <laughs> I think I woke up about 10 30 and at that stage I've been in bed for almost four, four or five hours uh, and then between about 10 30 and 1 30 I just couldn't sleep I considered getting up and hiking but I didn't want to do all 20 miles in the dark uh, so I managed to sort of get back to sleep and woke up about 3 30 and that was good enough for me so got up and started hiking uh, and I said, oh yeah, uh, like, if you ever camped in a crowded valley where everyone's had campfires all night, the cold air and smoke settle down and you can just smell thick, thick, thick smell of campfire. That's what it smells like right now. Uh, it's not making my eyes sore, which is good. But I can definitely taste it and smell it and I'm going to feel it in my throat a little bit. I quite like the smell, so I'm not too bothered. Uh, even if I had a mask to wear, I wouldn't yet be wearing it. Still not, I mean, scientifically it's probably, probably time to put one on, medically probably, it's probably not ideal, but uh, I'm certainly not struggling to find oxygen, so um, I'm not gonna worry about it. If it got thicker than when I was coughing and struggling to breathe, then yes. Yes, I'd want a mask, but we're nowhere near that. Uh, otherwise, 
yeah, 20 mile day into Mazama village. Uh, well, I'll probably call it a day. I'm aiming to be there by lunchtime. And I'll probably call it an early day there because I've got to do all the usual chores, except this time I can just collect the resupply box rather than having to go shopping for food. And uh, everything's already packaged and ready to go. But they have showers and laundry available and you can charge your electronics up. So I'll be doing all the usual stuff like that. And to be honest, with 20 already done, I don't really feel the need to to rush back out. I already have too much food left over this section, plus more food coming in. So I may as well sit around and eat food. And I mean, 20 mile days, not exactly giving my feet a break, but not really seeing much need to push out. And well, with the break, it'd probably be a 26 mile day or something, 27 mile day. And, yeah, I can do it in the morning. I only had four days to do this section. So getting in on a three and a half, may as well enjoy the half day off rather than pushing out into the next section. But we'll see how I feel when I get there. If I get there and it's not a very nice place to be, then maybe I'll just move on. <sighs> That's about all I've got to report. For now, carrying on. Well, that was something I didn't expect to happen for a little bit yet. Just met my uh, my first southbound through hiker, uh, a guy called Sky, who started at the Canadian border. I didn't actually ask when. Uh, no doubt it would be a depressing number if you told me. It's probably like a week or something, uh, given I start six to go. But uh, no, he's, he's, I said he's the first one I've met. First, I've met the southbound section hikers um, and people who have been flipping around. But um, he is the first one I've met that heads southbound all the way from Canada to Mexico. And uh, yeah, when I said he was the first one, he said he thinks he's at the front. He, he says he thinks, as far as he knows, he is the, uh, the tip of the spear heading south, I guess. So that was pretty cool. Um, super friendly dude, which is pretty rare for this section at the moment because I seem to be surrounded by people who just don't want to speak. Uh, don't really know any of them. There's a small group I know, which I keep, we hike up roughly the same pace, but I start about three hours earlier than each day, and I pull up in camp about three hours earlier than each night. But uh, other than that, there's a group of, well, a group, a, just a bunch of solo guys uh, who, it's like trying to get blood out of a stone, trying to get a conversation out of them. There's about four of them, and I've been just back and forth with them for the last few days, and, you try and speak to them, but yeah, I don't know what their deal is. Super shy, I just want to be left alone, I guess. I mean, they're all, they don't speak to each other either. They just pull in and set up camp in silence and hike in silence. And when you see them at different water sources, you can, sometimes you barely even get a hello. I've had a few southbound people, I don't know who they are, whether they're sectioning or not, but you say hi and you, just, you don't even get a response. So. It's not the most uh, sociable section in trail, which is fine. Although, as I said the other day, I've been hiking and camping solo for quite a while now. So, I mean, I'd be quite happy if I met some people I actually liked that somehow hiked in the same style as me, which is get up early, hike fast, uh, but also set up camp early. And, you know, it'd be good to have some people to actually regularly hang out and camp with, but generally the people who are even sort of similar speed or similar style to me, I generally don't want to be around. And the ones that I do meet that I would like to hike with are often just very different styles. So it makes it hard to be in the same place at the same time. Anyway, is what it is. Uh, it's been a pretty nice morning. It's been mercifully cool. Actually, even last night was it wasn't cold, but it was it was lovely and cool. I had to use my sleeping bag. Um, this morning I actually wore my sun gloves. So I usually use just off the top of my hands getting sunburnt. But um, 
I should use them for a little bit of warmth this morning. It was quite cool. So it's been great hiking weather this morning and I'm just coming up towards this, my 20 miles now and it's only about 10.30. Uh, I should be there. I should be on the road down by 11. And uh, yeah, hopefully I have a cold drink and an ice cream and maybe some lunch in my hand by, uh, by 11.30. So here's a fun lesson. Always be a pain in the ass. It's a lesson I've learned many times, but if you be a big pain in the ass, things work out. I'm in at Crater Lake at the moment in Mizama Village and uh, got in about 11, 11.30, had lunch, had a, few, had a few lunch beers with another Aussie. It's always good fun. Uh, guess we just get each other. But uh, went to the store to pick up my package and they had a look at their register of packages received and they said they didn't have it. Must be at the post office, which is about half an hour hitch from here. So, uh, how you doing? So, before I hitched down at the post office to chase up my package, I thought, hey, maybe I'll ring them first to see if it's actually there. Like, like the people here were nice enough, they rang the post office for me, and the post office said, hey, no, we've already sent that down to Mazama Village, it's down there. I go back to the counter here and say, hey, well, post office says they've sent it here. So you guys say you don't have it, they say they don't have it, but they say you have it. So the girl goes, has another look, comes back, we don't have it. Fortunately, I had a photo of the um, front of the package and I said, hey, can I go look for it myself? Um, I have a photo of the package, here's the address, here's my handwriting. I won't take anything which doesn't look like exactly like this photo because this is the photo of the package I sent. Go upstairs and find it straight away. <laughs> Literally within 10 seconds, spot my hand right and go, there it is right there. Here's the photo, here's the front of it. That's me, here's my ID, that's my package. It wasn't on their register. It was, it was gonna sit there forever. No one knew they had it. And just another good old lesson to always be a giant pain in the ass as much as you can be because yeah, it always works out. And see, package, we're all good now.